Okay, our last little bit on confidence intervals is, a, is applying it to a population proportion P. So instead of working out a mean, you might want to estimate the proportion of a population that fits a given criteria, which you would um, term as being a success. So thinking about this in um, sort of like a, a binomial uh, situation, uh, where you would have something that you could call a success or failure and you'd estimate the proportion of the population from your sample um, based on the successes that happened in your sample. So if x is the number of successes in the sample then x would follow a binomial distribution n is the size of the uh, or the number of trials and p is um, the probability of success. Um, for the sample though, P with this little subscript of S is the proportion of success in the sample, which we can then um, use this to work it out. So the number of successes that we have within our sample divided by the number of samples we have to give our proportion um, within that sample. And then it follows that we can get the expectation and variance like this. There are proofs of those in your textbook if you'd like to have a look at them. They're not very difficult but uh, you don't need to reproduce them. Then if we have n large enough we can make the following approximation where P s or the proportion of success in our sample follows a normal distribution the same way as before you've approximated a binomial to a normal it's similar to that um, so we're using our mean of p and the variance is pq over n as we just saw on that blue line above now just to note um, there's another way of checking if n is large enough and you've seen this before when approximating binomial to normal and it's to check that np and nq are both bigger than five now, we don't actually know what P is. The whole point of this was getting a confidence interval for our population proportion P. So, we use um, the proportion taken from the sample of X over N. So, our confidence interval then looks like this. Okay, so PS is the proportion from our sample, the proportion of success in our sample, and then it's plus or minus our Z value, which you're used to doing now from your previous confidence intervals, and then the square root of the variance. Now we just need to bear in mind that this is um, an approximate confidence interval uh, for all the reasons you've come across before, but just some specific ones. Um, we have a discrete distribution that's being approximated by a continuous one, so that al always brings in um, an element of it being approximate and some errors in there. Uh, we haven't applied a continuity correction in this one. That's because we're talking about n being um, of such a large size that a continuity correction wouldn't make very much difference at all. And since we're estimating and it's approximate anyway, there's not much point in, in putting that degree of accuracy in. So it does add another layer of, of a little bit of um, extra leeway uh, that we need to think about. Um, you've also got that the population variance was estimated from the sample, it's not the actual population variance, and the distribution of PS is only approximately normal. Okay, so all of the calculations we get off of it, we just take with a little pinch of salt, um, because we know they can vary a bit because this, this has been approximated in ma many different ways. Okay, so let's have a look in a, at an example. We've got an opinion poll taken before an election. In a random sample of 100 people, 42 said they would vote for the Blue Party. We want to find a 99% confidence interval for the proportion of the population that we think will vote Blue. Okay, so first of all, our probability or our proportion in our sample of successes is 0.42. That's 42 out of 100. This also gives us um, the proportion for failures as being 1 minus that, it's 0.58. And we're looking for a 99% confidence interval. So that's what this diagram looks like. Uh, so to read off our Z value for that one gives us 2.576. So our critical values for working out our confidence interval look like this. So it's our PS plus or minus the 2.576 times the square root of the variance. Now put in the numbers that we know. 
and then work that out and you get these two values. Now we can put that into our confidence interval like this. Now the next example takes the same situation we've just come from, we're just going to extend it a little bit. We want to estimate the size of the sample that would be needed to give a 99% confidence interval of the proportion with a width of 0.02. So how how would we need to change the sample size? If we look back at that previous example, you can see that the, the confidence interval there is quite, quite wide. If you're thinking about percentages, you're saying that the proportion could be anywhere between 29% and, and 40, um, 45%. That's really quite a, a wide range. So if we took a bigger sample, we know that we would get a better approximation. So this one's asking us just how big do we need it to be to narrow that width of the confidence interval down to 0 0.02. Now the width of the confidence interval is two times that bit that we add on or take away and we need that to equal 0 0.2. So carrying on that uh, calculation, putting in the numbers that we know, we get this and then rearrange that, you'll get that n needs to be 16,165.